episode. Yeah. Beth, welcome to the Profit Podcast. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good, mate. Yeah, really good. Thanks for coming on. Um, I've, I'd been asking you for a while to come on and talk about your life as a PT. That's really what I wanted to, to chat about today, because I think... Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to do a bit of an intro in a second as to what your background is and how long you've been in the industry and all that jazz. But I really want it. I think you've got some valuable lessons to give to our audience who are largely PTs in their first couple of years, maybe struggling, maybe in a commercial gym or not, but not picking up mm -hmm. clients and having those kinds of challenges. So I wanted to have a chat to you about that. Love it, love it. We, so, we both know I love a chat, so yeah, this is exactly. Gonna be, this is you, like be fun. To talk. you like to talk, so that's perfect. I so, love to talk. <laughs> for the for the purpose of the listeners who might might not know who you are, just give a little bit of an introduction to how long you've been in the industry, what got you into PT, just a bit about in general the last twelve months, sixteen months for you. Okay, um, so. I've been in the industry now for two years. Um, I started my training back in 2019, I qualified as a PT um, in the November. And then I was fitness coaching for a couple of months. Um, and then COVID hit in the March where I got put on furlough um, and then eventually made a redundant but at that point I was just fitness coaching um I found that because of a lot of the 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 courses a lot of it is so basic that I wanted to sort of build up quite a lot of like experience and knowledge before I like dove into like one-to-one -one personal training so it took me a couple of months COVID hit and then I got made redundant so I decided to go um sort of off on my own a little bit and see what I could do um I started going to people's houses and with the limited equipment I had, like just training people that I'd met through my old job and new job and referrals and things like that. And then I found myself at um, Total Fitness as a little bit of a whim. I was just found, found the job, um, applied for it, got it. And that was in the September of 2020. Um, so almost, yeah, almost at Total Fitness now for two years, which is crazy um and I started off there as an employed personal trainer um so similar to models that um Pure Gym have and JD Gym have they um I worked a specific amount of hours um for minimum wage and then I didn't pay any rent got clients slowly um and they took like a large chunk of the money so it's sort of their business model their take on yeah processing pts and things like that um so i did that for a couple of months in and out because we had many a lockdown still so the november lockdown and we went back into lockdown in january so um overall i was there for maybe four months and then i went over to self-employed last june so actually i've just celebrated my uh one year self-employment anniversary which is no way exciting. we did not we did not time that at all to fall no off I know I like literally that. hadn't even thought about it until I thought right what's the date so the date is the third of June I yeah I moved over to self-employment on the first so wow. I just celebrated my little my year wow that's passed without gosh that's crazy that's right amazing. we can definitely we can definitely talk about that then so but that might bring us on to the first question that I'd written down for a topic that I'd written down to talk about. You've done the whole, and I like this journey. I like employed to self-employed. I quite like it for a PT yeah. because I think it gives everyone a bit of perspective. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who enter as a freelance personal trainer who might be an unpopular opinion, but have no clue what it takes to actually pick up clients and, and be good at personal training. And I quite like the employed to self-employed journey. So how did you find that? I rate it really highly. I feel like there were, there's a lot of controversy around it and I don't really know why. Um, when I started um, the employed model, I had so many self-employed personal trainers saying, 
you're getting ripped off it's silly what's the point like because they do take a large proportion of the earnings specifically at total fitness because right. you get paid for the hours that you work um and you don't pay rent they do take a large proportion but it balances out because you you get leads and um you get the support you get the the feeling of the team um as well as loads and loads of other benefits so i think a lot of people get so focused on gosh i'm doing all of this work and and they're taking all of my money and they're not even doing anything but in reality they they built me up a large amount to feel adequate enough to be self employed and although um i definitely feel like it could have been handled better in some ways i would say that's probably more management than anything else um i have recommended it to so many new pts really Every, uh, so so many right. um specifically um the one i went through cuz i looked at all of them i looked at your gym much at jd i looked at the gym i looked at all of them and for me this one was definitely the most superior um in lots of aspects but also a big a big part i found i don't know whether it's like this other gyms that have this model is that there can be sometimes quite a big divide between the actual team and and the self employed and um i managed to bridge that gap quite nicely so i joined top fitness as part of top fitness and i got really close with the fitness coaches and the management which meant that if they had someone they thought might be good for me they could pass them on to me or i got to speak to the members more i got to do the inductions and the classes and things like that and i got a foot in the door through being employed rather than just walking in as self employed and completely you completely own um entity and you don't have that um you don't have that group feeling especially because when i joined total fitness profit was was no longer there yeah. um uh, so the the energy that profit sounded like it used to have from what i've heard where it was very much like a community and a support system and things like that if i'd walked in as a self employed pt i don't think i would have got that um so it meant that i got that support and now even self employed um i have an incredible relationship with the entire team at total fitness and it's put me in such amazing stead for for my career i couldn't recommend enough every time a new ept comes through i'm like you are doing the best thing you could possibly do in this industry right now is start off slow take a little bit of a hit work your way up and then go for it i really really rate it right i'm going to well i'm going to mention a couple of things on that first of all our relationship i haven't even talked about that um because <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we met, yeah i haven't even said how we know each other i know i've um, been talking so for like 15 minutes <laughs> obviously you mentioned profit there all the listeners will know about profit um cuz podcast has been in in um functioning since well well before all the profit stuff and total fitness stuff happened but then i met you through being an employed pt at total fitness and referred from an ex profit trainer to come and do some mentoring yeah but the second so that's our relationship just for the listeners but i also wanted to highlight i don't i don't think it's every employed pt will have the attitude that you've got so when yeah. you were talking there the certain things that you do and i think you do them whether you do them naturally or you don't realize or or what but building relationships with people like talking to the receptionist talking to the staff integrating yourself into the into the environment mm. that's invaluable is that something you do natural or do you have to do you consciously work at it or what cuz if you're an employee pt you could be in that model and massively fail because yeah. you don't integrate yourself into the environment yeah and i think um there has been so if i i became a, an ept um back in the in 2021 on the eight. september yeah and i have seen eight employed personal trainers come and go how many have got gone actually yeah. gone right yeah so i started with two um and they both left um i think um maybe a may, no maybe another four have come and gone and then two have stuck along with me 
Um, so it's it, it's uh, it's very sweet because um, the current fitness manager very much like puts me as like the golden standard, like, well, oh, that's done so well. That means they always come up to me and I'm like, gosh, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a direct question now then. What's the, what's the difference between what you've done and what some of maybe the guys who have left or still hanging on in there unemployed haven't done? Because I... to go from EPT to self-employed is yeah. quite, a, that's quite a quick transition in four months. Yeah, well, especially because they they try and um, make you do it over a six to eight month period. But I chose to, they drop your hours down from 20 to zero. And I had just dropped mine down to 15. And I decided that I wanted to go because I had enough clients. Um, But I think the biggest thing that um, I did was I didn't expect anything from anyone um now I'm not slandering anyone but I wouldn't say that the management style that I that I had when I was um in EPT really helped me out I did everything myself so I went onto the system and I went and I got boosts I stole the boosts from the other fitness coaches with their permission (laughs) with their permission (laughs) none of the fitness coaches want the boosts they can't be bothered so I'd go but they didn't want to do them right they didn't want to do them they didn't want to do them yeah I understand wage yeah they want to go and sit in the back they don't want to do it so I'd say do you mind if I take your boost like um if I can get a like a lead out of it that'd be amazing and they're like please you do it (laughs) um so I take the booths I would take the classes so I'd go up to one of the fitness coaches that I you hated the classes and I said please let me teach your classes like you go for it um I never I never took the job for granted so I didn't expect help um I didn't need any help because I was like right I'm here I'm going for it I got my first client within two days um because I got a boost I stole a boost and um after the boost, I went up to the treadmill. And I said, look, um, I think the boost went great. I think you could do with a little bit of help. Um, I said, I think you've got the foundations, which are amazing, but I can see that you're a little bit unsure. And I think this would be a really good path for you. And he was my first client and we are celebrating almost our two year anniversary in September. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's still with me. Yeah. I really like that. No expectations. You you just went in there and went, look, I'm, I've got to do this for myself. If I get help, it's a bonus. Yeah. Um, which I, I'd love that. If every trainer came in with that attitude and just said, look, I've got to be, I've got to be self-sufficient here. I've got to get after it. Yeah. But if I get help, it's a bonus. Brilliant. Yeah. If I meet great people, awesome. But there's going to be some dickheads along the way as well. I just awesome. think that's that's part and parcel of every environment. Yeah. And what what made you then? Have you always been like that? Because to do a boost session, a boost is like a, a trial, I guess, is it? Like a one-off? Yeah. 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 And then two days later, you went straight back up to them and said, how are you getting on? Oh, no, no, no. I, I did it afterwards. So we did the boost. And then he was like, right, I'm going to go on the treadmill for a little while after the boost. Um, and so I went straight back up to him. <laughs> I didn't even wait two days. Oh, it wasn't um, even two days. I no, I literally finished. I walked. Um, I think I walked away and then I thought, oh, fuck it. I was like, I think you need help. And I think I am the person that could help you. And um, he still says to this day that I'm an absolute force to be reckoned with. And I clearly took no, <laughs> don't want to take no for an answer. So he was like, right, fine, okay. Did you um, have any sales training back in those days? Oh, done- God, no, no. And I have, I have massive social anxiety. Um, so the idea of like walking up to someone that I don't know, um, gives me massive, even now, like massive social anxiety. Like if I were to teach a class the 10 minutes beforehand, I'd be sweating profusely. Um, and I'd be really, really nervous and my hands would shake and, um, and I have to practice exactly what I'm going to say in my intro so that I don't mess it up. Um, but there's something that because I love what I do and I needed this to work so badly for so many reasons. Um, and I think I just, so I just thought I've got to do it. and I've got to push everything aside and I've just got to go for it because I need <laughs> it to work. So I did. And it, and it worked and you're celebrating a two year celebration with somebody I because, know. because you, you took the bull by the horns and you went, I'm, yeah. Yeah, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And he yeah. likes to pretend like he doesn't love every hour he spends with me, but I know he does. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's brilliant. Um, 
Yeah, and I, the, it's the same for everybody I speak to who picks clients up where they say, where, and you go, where did it start? And they're like, I just, one, there's just a moment where I went, oh, balls to it. And yeah. They just, they just went for it. And that yeah. created a five, 10, 15 year relationship with a client, mm-hmm. which if everybody's listening now and you're scared of going up and approaching people, just do it. Just go and have a go. You don't even need training. You no, don't need training. No. no, you don't. I mean, not only did I not have training, but every fiber of my being is like, nope, <laughs> don't do that because that's really awkward. Um, but if you, if you really, if you want something enough and you've got enough riding on it, you've just got to do it. And the, there's literally nothing bad that can happen. The worst they could do is turn around and maybe be a dickhead about it. And then you've got a funny story. That's always my go-to answer. At least I'll get a story out of it. So if someone says to me, fuck off, no, I'm not interested. Then at least <laughs> I can go and tell all my friends that. And then I'll be like, oh, that was horrible. I'm like, yeah, it's funny. And then you move on and then you find someone else. And it, you just- and someone just else says for. yes. The next one you talk to says yes. And then you're like, oh, exactly. cool, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was really good. I didn't expect to get that from the initial intro. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. That's really good. I love I to chat. It's <laughs> a big lesson for people in there that you just went in raw and, and went, first of all, no expectations. You're going to go in expecting nobody to give you anything. You're going to go and earn it. If you yeah. got help, great. But then that kind of gung ho to think, well, the alternative is that I don't make this work and that's not an option. Yeah. Yeah, I think you got to put yourself in that position to be able to yeah. take some risks and the risks, like what you said at the end there, the risks aren't even that bad. No. What's the worst thing that can happen? Someone tells yeah. you to go away. Yeah. Okay, I'll Bye. go away. Yeah. It doesn't matter, does it? Exactly. Um, so what in terms of where you are now, actually different question in terms of being employed versus freelance, because you did that in four months. That's quite a short space of time. Mm-hmm. What's the difference now? Like, how are you feeling now you're freelance versus being employed, honestly? Um, oh, I love it. Oh, I you like it. it, right? Okay. Yeah, I do, 100%. I mean, there's <laughs> freedom. There's a lot more freedom. Uh, obviously, there's pros and cons, but the freedom alone, like, um, if I have a big gap in the middle of my day, I go home and nap, for sure. Like, almost every single time I've got a big gap, I'm like, now's the time to have a sleep which you can't do that if you're um if you're employed like you can't and the the money side as well I mean this industry isn't all about or it shouldn't be all about money and I think the people that do focus all about the money are the ones that um don't do as well on it but that is a pro I get to keep all of my earnings I get to keep all of my income granted I have to pay rent but in comparison to what I earn it it's no comparison is there yeah um I the the thing I'd say is um sick days and holiday is a lot harder that's the pros of employment yes um for sure for sure um and knowing that you're wasting a company's time rather than your own is quite nice um because you have to hold yourself accountable a lot more because the only person you're disappointing when you're self-employed is you um and that def- definitely takes some adjustment it's been a wild old journey being self-employed and I don't feel like I'm ever gonna stop making mistakes or stop learning no matter how long I do this for but yeah. for me if you're ready and when you're ready self-employment is the way to go for sure that's good I want I wanted to kind of talk honestly about that as well because I, I saw I was on looking at some social media posts this afternoon. I saw one from Lift the Bar. Shout out to Lift the Bar. They're coming on the podcast soon. Um, and there was some really good quotes about what PTs would love to say, but don't tell anyone. Yeah. And some of it is about there's, a, there's some negatives to being self-employed. You know, oh. you can be quite anxious about, am I doing enough for my clients? Yeah. You know, are they going to stay on? Uh-huh. You know, all the things that, probably we don't talk about enough and yeah. being employed does give you a bit of security initially it does yeah it does just to get your there's, feet in like you yeah. said put in the door there's so many parts of self-employment that does absolutely suck yeah um and like and that's and that's okay but I think the problem is is um when you go into this industry you're usually quite passionate about it so you feel like 
ever saying anything negative about it, especially when everyone's like, God, you earned like, you get paid so much and you can have all the time off you want and blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like shouting out all the amazing things about being self-employed, which is true. I stand by that. There's some but good ones. It's also, yeah. it's also okay to like sit there and be like, yeah, sometimes this is shit. So um, a little bit of background in terms of like my journey with self-employment is last mm -hmm. November, I ended up having like a massive meltdown about I was doing too many sessions I had far too much pressure on myself um I was doing far too much and I basically ended up having to take a week off work um completely unexpected I just messaged my clients saying I need this week because I was drained um I wasn't physically ill but mentally I was I was absolutely gone and in that week I ended up losing so much money because I didn't end up working and yeah. These are the sorts of things that people don't, if I had been off for a week employed, I would have had that as sick pay. Mm. Um, and instead I had to bite the bullet and focus on my mental health and put myself first and accept that loss. Um, and I think it's really easy for people to see like the exciting parts of self-employment, which is, oh, I want a day, day off, I'm gonna take it. Or um, I don't wanna work today, so I'm not going to, no. No, because unless you just don't ever want to earn any money, it doesn't work like that. You have to, you work, God, so many hours and you feel guilty if you have a sick day. And um, don't get me started on bloody tax returns. I can't so <laughs> talk about that. Um, but then you answer to no one. And if you do want to take a, a day off and you've thought about it and you've rearranged things, then you can. And it's, incredibly liberating at the same time but to think that you're going to walk into self-employment and it's going to be like all sunshines and rainbows and it's going to be lovely and you can pick your hours and you can do whatever you want yeah, yeah. for sure but if you've got rent to pay then you best believe you're going to be up at 4 50 a.m and you won't be going to sleep until 10 p.m when you first start because you will do anything under the sun to make it work and to to make this this career that you've chosen work and that's yep. a hard bit it is yeah. hard but it's worth it yeah it's a, it's a message that you know if anybody wants to be self-employed some of it is going to suck oh, yeah. ass, right it really is some uh, I can't remember where I heard this it was a podcast I was listening to recently and they talked about what does it take to be really good at something and especially if you're going to be a self-employed PT you want to be good because yeah. Your, rep your reputation becomes everything as well. Mm -hmm. And their equation for it was hard work plus sacrifice sprinkled with moments of joy. And I really like that. I love just, that. It's good, isn't it? Because just with the hard work and the sacrifice, you can't do that because it just all sucks then. Everything yeah. starts to be like, ah, oh, it's just, just graft every yeah. day, all day. Yeah. But the moments of joy, I think, are a big part of it. And and you've you've just been saying about like, how much you love it and that's what gets you through when you go when you client you see your clients getting what they want yeah and you have those kind of moments of freedom for yourself and you mm -hmm. see you know people shouldn't be afraid to say they see the money that you can make from it as well that yeah. was definitely part of it for me yeah the financial freedom that you could gain it's massive but it's hard work you can't yeah. just you can't just block off that bit of oh this is going to be dead easy and it's all going to be loads of fun so yeah. it's gonna suck yeah yeah especially and it, in the and beginning it, yeah. <laughs> and no and it, and, it, and it really does and I think the people that maybe don't make it work in the first year because there's always that big number that are like this amount of PTs fail within the first year yeah and I think it's the ones that aren't willing to sacrifice enough to make it work um or they get too focused on um, a specific niche or what they think they deserve um, so oh I deserve clients that are fully committed or oh I only want this uh, this type of client this type of client but realistically when you're first starting out you are just grafting you are grafting and working to stay alive in this industry and although it's not pretty and it's it's not what we'd all like to say. We'd love to be like, oh, from the word go, I only chose clients as I loved and, <laughs> and things like that. It, it's not. And it's 
the brutal truth is that you have to work incredibly hard and you do yeah. have to sacrifice um, certain things, whether it's your, your social life or, or whatever. But because if you do it now, five years down the line, you're going to be in a position that is amazing. Um, and I know you always used to say this to me um, when we first started. You said, this is, a, this is a lifestyle job. This is a job that you can fit around your lifestyle. You can make this work for you. Um, and I completely agree with that. And I think, but when you have put enough into it to be able to take a little bit back. Um, yeah. I don't know whether you mentioned it on here. I'm sure you have. Um, but the emotional bank account that you talk about with your clients. Have you mentioned that to your listeners? About a hundred times, probably. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, um, we talk about it a lot. Your little phrase. Um, it's similar for me. It's similar to that in the fact that you've got to give and give and sacrifice and graft a lot into this job and this industry to start with. And it takes a while. And then eventually when you've put enough into that bank account, that little work bank account, Mm -hmm. You can start, you can start bringing a little bit. So you can start thinking, you know what? I don't want to work weekends anymore. And then you can start thinking, you know what? I don't, I don't want to work Mondays anymore. Or um, I only want to work mornings. And eventually when you put enough of that hard work at the beginning, you sacrificed enough, you can start bringing little bits back out a little bit of a time. And that is when the job becomes really freaking cool. Ooh, really lovely. Cool. Lovely. I like that. And we, we had this conversation a couple of days ago about should you be friends with a client? Because that was something yeah. that was brought up to you by another freelance trainer who yeah. said, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't really be friends with a client. And we had a big discussion. We had a big chat about that and we were on the yeah. same page with it. And I'm going to tell a story of, I, there's a client of mine who I've had for 12 plus years, probably 15 now. Yeah, knocking on 15 years. Wow. And he has phenomenal Man United Old Trafford tickets. And I obviously have two football obsessed, two young boys, and I got to use his phenomenal tickets, which are wow. just behind the direct, director's box at Old Trafford, to take them to their first Old Trafford game for free. Wow. That's what client relationships can do for you. My boys will never, ever forget that moment. And if, if you build a relationship with your clients, and this is about exactly what you said, putting the time in up front, yeah. without really expecting anything back can give you back the most magic of moments. Yes. And it's, it, it's one of them things that still baffles me today why trainers don't see that the relationship with the client is one of the most important things. Yeah. Yes. So the technical stuff counts as well. But um, I, where did that come from for you? Because you've got that automatically. I didn't teach you that. No. Um. It, 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 it was just that it was just there when we talked about yeah. client care that was I just think, there yeah I, it's it's kind of a hard one um to figure out where it came from um but I think a big part of it was thinking about what I would like from um a coach right and I think a big this is going to sound um really negative and a little bit like sob story and I've said this so many times to you and you always say don't be ridiculous um but I would say that in terms of like my skills um and knowledge in comparison to maybe the other PTs at the gym is um basic average pretty good like it's it's what most PTs have so it's not like I specialize in anything massively specific okay. so what I have always relied upon is my social skills and I've known from quite a young age that I'm quite empathetic I'm a very good listener I'm also a very good talker um I can pretty much bring anybody out of their shell unless they outright hate me from the word go um it's it, I can get most people talking so I just found quite quickly that um no matter what I could have a conversation with someone and that side of it being being the person that they can come and talk to about anything being the person they can offload to being that sounding board mm. that provided me with so much satisfaction um in this job that I just realized that that's the bit that I love and then we just sort of like 
sprinkle some exercises in with it and uh, a little bit of progress but then I get to be that person that when they're having the worst day and they're like I just don't want to do anything I'm like right take a breath our only goal today is just to move our body that's the only goal I'm not looking for PP I'm not looking for anything I'm looking for us to move our body feel better and you're going to walk out of here feeling 10 times lighter and that's it and being able to help someone rethink their expectations for whether it's exercise or um like their stress for me that was incredibly satisfying so I just sort of ran with that and it turns out I'm kind of good at it <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you're a natural <laughs> but you are you're a natural at it so is that something you've always you've you've always been good at and you've doubled down on it since you've been a PT yeah I think so I think I've always been a pretty good listener I was quite quiet as a kid um I'm one of four kids so there was always like <sighs> millions of us um and I was like middle-ish so um and also like the easiest one so like I was always yeah. the one like don't worry guys I'll do whatever they want to do so I just found that I was pretty good at listening um and being empathetic and being with clients over time I realized how yeah. well that got responded to so mm. then I just kicked it up a little bit further with like going the extra mile so not only was I listen and be that soundboard but I'd also think about what I could do outside of the sessions um and that's when things like really took up a notch in terms of my client relationships when I started to think that like how can I improve this relationship outside of them what can I sacrifice a little bit to mm. make them feel better to make them feel good and to make them feel um what's the word like appreciated by me because for me it's, it goes both ways I'm aware that I'm giving a service but I'm also aware that they're paying me for it I'm under no illusion that I'm this incredible personal trainer and they should be thankful for the time they get to spend with me. For me, I want them to know that I also appreciate their commitment and their time and their trust in me um, and their loyalty. And that's how I see it. I want them to know that I appreciate them as well. Yeah. And I'm, I wonder how many PTs have actually, I mean, I hope a lot have listening to this, but thanking your clients like you mentioned they're actually appreciating and saying thank you for being great clients yeah <laughs> it was yeah. kind of one of profit's code of conducts was to say when was the last time you thanked a client when was yeah. the last time you said i really appreciate you and i love that, that you turn up every week on time and yeah you give me your time you know i couldn't do this without you uh, that's a part of it as well is that yes we're providing a service like you said mm. but it wouldn't work without the clients yeah 100%. it just doesn't work without yeah. them yeah so that's a kind of natural thing but that's interesting so you you were from a fairly big family four and a yeah. four and you had to find a role within that family and your role was probably the bit of, it sounds like a bit of the glue that knitted the group together yeah a little I would yeah I would say that actually and I think my mum and dad would say that as well I was just I was the easy one I was the one that would, would sort of go along with like plans and 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 not really be bothered um so yeah very very much the glow I think yeah and that's a strength like that's because often we say I say to trainers or coaches like look at what your strengths are do something like a Gallup strength test or a psych profile and double down on the strengths doesn't mean to say you don't need to brush up on other things because I know you're mm -hmm. doing more technical learning now and yeah. you're looking a lot more at the the programming side and, and yeah. getting more technically sound but your biggest strength, just from knowing you for 12 months as well, is 1 million percent working with people. That is yeah. your biggest strength. And you double down on that, you will do very, very well. Yeah. And just wrapping the other bits around it. Cool. Um, other questions that I'd, I'd written down. I mean, we'll, we'll keep going with some of these topics, but things that I think would benefit the audience... In terms of a niche, you said before you didn't you don't really have a niche, you didn't have a niche. Do you have one now? Um have you figured one out in the last 12 to 16 months? Or are you still working with way. general population? Because that I loads would, of trainers ask about yeah. should I have a niche? What what have you found? I would say um that in the in personal training terms, 
I don't have a niche. Right. Um, I have a client that is 17. I have a client that is 75. Um, That's I don't the age think, range. That is my age range. I don't have a niche. I've got 50-50 in terms of females and males. Right. Um, but what I would say is I do not have a single client that I do not love spending time with. Right. Um, as I've gotten um, older in terms of my business, um, I have found that I only choose clients that I click with like mm -hmm. instantly um and I find that we get on really really well so although niche wise in terms of like um middle-aged women or um mm -hmm. or older men or younger females I don't have a demographic like that but what my niche would be the the people that I know that are going to enjoy me and my style and that's what I got I don't take anyone and anyone I once had a consultation and um it it wasn't going swimmingly in the fact that um it wasn't really giving me much back um and I said well you can clearly tell I I love to chat so we can have lots of time to talk and he just turned dead in the face and just said I hate small talk and I thought oh, oh no <laughs> this isn't gonna work <laughs> um, so afterwards he was like um, yeah, so I'd like to join us for some sessions. And I was like, <gasps> really? <laughs> I was like, Why? <laughs> so I had to say, you know what? At the moment, my schedule, I don't think our schedules are going to quite match up. However, I think I've got this amazing personal trainer who doesn't like to talk at all um, <laughs> that I think would be amazing for you. Um, so it's just an example of I've got, I've got to, I've got to click with the client. Um, and recently I've had two consultations that I didn't really need or could have fitted in, but I met them and I loved them both so yeah. much that I was like, I'm going to make time for you because you're so cool. Yeah. Um, so that would be my niche, having clients that I feel really passionate about. Yeah, that's that's underestimated. That niche of clicking with someone and mm -hmm. having shared values and shared interests. Yeah. That kind of thing is so massive. And like you can have a huge age range. You can have male, female, 17 to 75. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably find your 17 year old would get on with the 75 year old. Oh, a hundred percent. They both have a good gossip. Yeah. Sure. Just because they're they're similar personalities or they're yeah. they kind of got the same sort of values yeah. and don't have to be the same age range. They're not gonna have the no. same reference points, but yeah. they'll get on. And that, that's I think that's good for PTs to hear. It's really good to hear as well that you were brave enough to say to somebody, not for me. No, yeah. Someone who's willing to give you money, you've yeah. got to, you get into a position where you go, I, this ain't going to work. It's not going to work yeah. for you. It's not going to work yeah. for me. We're going to drain each other. Yeah. I, it, it is not going to work. And I think there's a lot of pressure on PTs to just say yes to everything Definitely. which there is an element at the beginning for Did sure you do that at I, the beginning yeah yes, that was a hundred percent um yeah. I took anyone and everyone um and it meant that a little bit later down the line I ended up having to have a couple of difficult conversations where yeah. I basically just said I don't think that this is working as well um as it could be and I'd refer them on um and I think at the beginning anyone and everyone but I think there's a crazy amount of pressure for PTs not, to not only take a lot of shit from clients that they don't get on with because it's money. And on the other side, to have to have a niche, going back to that comment, um, do I need a niche? What's my niche? Gosh, I don't have a niche. And then sometimes mm. there's, a, there's a little bit of snobbishness from PTs that do have a niche when you just say, no, I just weren't with like, just the general population or I just work with people that want to lose a little bit of weight and sometimes you meet experienced PTs that have a very specific niche and they they can sometimes come across a little bit like oh well well then they're just starting out that'll change soon and you know what who cares if it doesn't who cares if you like working with the general population if you are doing your best work yeah. working with the general population you're doing your best work feeling out clients based on your relationship with them then why is that a bad thing I, I for me if I never have a niche but I keep my clients for years at a time and 
they're happy and I'm happy and I'm providing a service that I can say I'm confident with, then why do you need a niche? Well, if you take them through true transformation over time, that is a niche. Mm -hmm. Like we say that all the time that most PTs are looking for this demographic that they serve, whether it's like 20 to 30 year old women who are experienced X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Well, being a great PT is a niche. That's a niche. Like making yeah. sure that people actually get the transformation they came for and changing their lives. Do you know how many PTs do that? Small yeah. percentage, very small percentage. That's mm-hmm. niche. So yeah, yeah I, I agree with you on that. That being said, you know, from a marketing perspective, you can start to narrow it in, in terms of certain yeah. products. So I, I think we give the flip side of that as well. If people are listening, there's still a benefit to having a, a niche target when it comes to your marketing. Yeah. But But I also want them to hear that you don't really have a specific person it's well you do but it's not like a 20 year old male from, yes from this housing it's, it doesn't work <laughs> like that <laughs> like it's yeah. more do you click with them yeah do I think yeah. I can work with this person yeah all right let's do it and if you yeah. don't feel free to pass them on there's, there's no drama with that either yeah. cool very cool um you covered you've covered so much in this last like whatever it is we've done but that's good that's what I wanted it to be I wanted it to pick in bits what's next for you that's probably the next question I want to ask you what's what do you think is next for you going forwards because what have you done two years with a yeah. pandemic yeah so and yeah I'll, sorry to interrupt but I'm just going to give people a bit of context here is that you are for someone who's only been in it probably realistically a year to 15 Mm -hmm. months you are phenomenally successful like you are packed with clients you've already done a price increase which scares the pants off most pt (laughs) you've gone from self employed to self-employed in a very short space of time and you are super organized much more than you were you're very aware as well having worked with you for a while you're very self-aware um and that's a difficult skill so I think in terms of how far you come and where your business is, you've done a phenomenal job, just to give you some credit on that. Thank but what you. do you think is next for you? Um, see, we, we were speaking about this the other day, weren't we? Yeah. Um, and That's why I brought it up. Sort of, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's almost like you have a plan. Um, so there's sort of, there's lots of things going on in my head. I think sometimes I struggle to look so far ahead because I've only just started to accept that I'm actually kind of decent at this and that I'm not going to fail right okay Um, it's taken me a long long time to not be waiting for me to fail um and now I finally feel like I've caught up with that I'm a little bit like oh right okay something's happening this is good um We spoke about this the other day, but something I would love after me just going on about, um, I don't need a niche. Um, I have, I've been taking on more and more pre and postnatal clients, um, which I find incredibly rewarding. Um, I had my first uh, pre and postnatal uh, back in January. And she came to me when she was 13 weeks. She's now uh, 34. And due in July, which is super exciting. Still training with me, still going for it. She's amazing. Um, <laughs> and I found it so wildly satisfying taking her through that journey. Um, and it's been amazing. And now I've got four women um, on the books, whether either pre or postnatal. Um, and I love it. I think it's so exciting taking someone through um, a journey like this and it's a journey that which is kind of cool because only like 50 percent of the population can go through which is super cool (laughs) uh, which I love and I think everyone's pregnancy can is obviously wildly different and which means it never gets boring um and that's interesting I've not thought of that before yeah it's all different isn't it yeah so so different so I have my 34 uh, weeker um, who has had an amazing pregnancy. She's like flown through it. She's an absolute dream. She looks like one of those people that just stuffed a basketball underneath her belly and like that's it and everything else is perfect. And she's had no pain and she's lovely and she's glowing. And 
I bet all of the pregnant people hate her because she looks amazing. <laughs> um, and then I have um, another client who um, has really, really, really struggled through her other two mm. pregnancies. And she's struggling with this one with weight gain and her confidence. And she's got pelvic girdle pain already at like week 15. And um, it's so interesting having to adapt your um, your product according to what they're going through. And the difference is huge and within such within a niche. The the difference is huge, um, and pregnancy can be such an exciting, but also such a shit time. Mm. It can be really really fun. It can be really really scary, um, and being able to be there for someone because relationship is such a big thing for me being able to make someone's journey whether it's more comfortable or better or they get more confident or they go into labor feeling stronger and more powerful than they did in the last others or whatever I find that so cool um so I think if I could that would definitely be a goal for me whether it's Medium term or long term, I'd love to work more with uh, pre and postnatal clients. Definitely, definitely. Cool, good. And and yeah. the niche we again we spoke about this the other day, didn't we? Um, but you stumbled across that. That was yeah. more of a. Sure. So when people said you have a niche, sometimes and I didn't. I didn't know I was going to end up coaching personal trainers for a living. Mm. It was never my goal. I yeah. never. I never got into PT for doing that. I think sometimes you just get a love for something and I just started doing it for free. I was doing yeah. it for free for a couple of years, really just helping other PTs. And, and if someone said, would you meet with me and go through that? I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Like, I didn't cause I liked doing it. It wasn't cause I wanted money from it or I thought it was a business idea and it turned out I was good at it and it turned out I liked doing it and people got value and then started paying me. It was more that, for a niche if people are wanting yeah. to find their niche is, is that something similar for you with the the pre and post nail yeah massively just fell into it I mean it's something that um I thought about like a little bit before starting my journey at all in personal training but um I was pre and post nail trained over lockdown it's the qualification I did then um and I didn't really think anything of it I just thought it'll be on my list of qualifications that I put on the app and that's it um, and it's only until I started actually training pre and, pre and postnatal clients that I realized how much I loved it. And I think that's a big thing to remember with your niche as mm. well, is not to force it. The reason yeah. why it's a niche is because you're good at it. If yeah. you try and force yourself into a hole that you don't fit into, then you're going to be yeah. shit at it. And then it's not really a niche. You're just doing something that you're really, really bad at. Or you try and look where the money is. When I started doing PT yes. mentoring, there wasn't a PT mentoring business. Yes. There was no money. It yeah. didn't exist. In fact, people yeah. told me the opposite. People told me it'd never work. Yeah. So it's sometimes just exactly right what you love doing. Just got to go with it. You've just got yeah. to not put too much pressure on yourself with it. And if you, like I said, if you never find one, then maybe that's your niche. Um, if you go further down the line, you realize that you like working with a certain type of population, then that's fine. But you've got to love it. You've got to love it and you've got to be good at it. Um, because if it's not, it, it, you're not going to improve with it because if it's something that you love, you're willing to graft. Um, and a lot of the time, the yeah. niches are the hardest thing to follow because you've got to do a lot more work with it. So you have basically just said that there was not a business in mentoring PTs when you started. You have forged your way into this little teeny tiny niche where no one's really been before. And that must have taken a lot, not only convincing people that it would work, but completely finding your way in the dark. Um, and that was your boundaries and how you had to graft. Whereas if you decide to go into the niche of rehab or pre and postnatal, you have to do a lot of work a lot of research lots, a lot of yeah. lot of learning um and you've also got to like make a lot of mistakes um and so if you're not willing to graph for it then what's the point and with those moments of like that equation that isn't mine sprinkled moments of joy in there yeah. that you get a result with somebody like a yeah a, a new mum and you've managed yeah. to help her through a pregnancy oh it's the yeah. best feeling in the world 
and so she goes, I couldn't have done this without you. Or turns yeah. around and says, wow, I can't believe I'm in this great shape having gone through yeah. all this. I mean, that is the moment of joy that you do it yeah. all for. Yeah, that makes me want to cry. Like thinking about that makes me want to cry because <laughs> I want like I want to I want to do that for someone. Um, and I swear if my client tries to say anything like that to me, I'll be like, don't because <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> but that makes it all worth it. Knowing it that does. you made a big difference and you helped somebody through a serious yeah. event in their life, yeah. whether it's health or, you know, they were having a baby or whatever it is, that yeah. it's massively important that you get a buzz out of that. Yeah. Because uh, the work and the sacrifice is going to be difficult. That's, you can't take that away if you're going to be yeah. good at something. All right. So pre and postnatal, a niche. Yeah. Anything yeah. else that's next for you that you're, because like I've done this a fair bit with coaching clients recently, setting some new goals and things like that. It just feels like the right time of year to be doing that with people. Yeah. And it should be an equal blend of excited about it, but also shit in your pants. So what yeah. are you excited about, but equally shit in your pants about? Um, I'm excited to get better <laughs> okay <laughs> I, i'm excited to stop making as many mistakes um okay, and you. trust my judgment a little bit more like i'm excited not to be the new girl or to not feel like i have to ask three different people's opinion on yeah. whether or not i should give someone a discount or um just trust my judgment a little bit more i'm excited to be more experienced and um back myself a little bit more and I know that that comes with experience and trusting myself a little bit more um in terms of what I'm scared about I'm still scared um that I that I've had quite a rosy um dip into personal training so I think I've been quite lucky in terms of I've never had the dreaded drop off that everybody quotes and everyone says you're gonna drop off you're gonna get a drop off blah 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 blah. and I've never had it um and I think I'm still expecting it I'm still expecting for people to turn around and go why the hell am I paying you so much money (laughs) and then just go see ya um I'm waiting for that drop off and I don't know why because I'm let's say 15 months in so into my second year first into my second year and um uh, yeah, I'm still expecting it. So I think that's what I'm scared. I feel like sometimes I'm scared that people are going to turn around and just be like, nah. <laughs> I'm no. I'm not what sure. Doing? I'm not sure that ever goes away. Yeah. I think you get better coping strategies. How how do you cope with that at the minute? Because I think, because if you, it's almost like starting to believe your own hype. Like, no, I can never do any wrong with this client. That's bullshit. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. that's rent a friend. That's not yeah. right. Like the minute you stop serving that client, there is an option for them to go somewhere else. Yes. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Like you've, got, you've got money in the bank. You've definitely got an emotional bank account built up the longer you have them. Mm-hmm. So they will they allow you to make mistakes. But yeah. if you make too many mistakes, they will go somewhere else. No doubt. Yes. And that's, that's part of running your own business. That's just the yeah. way it is. How do you deal with that? kind of because I get it as well and I bet yeah. every single freelance business owner gets the same thing you get a little bit yeah. of anxiety about is this all gonna go yeah. tits up tomorrow yeah like how yeah. do you how do you deal with that now that might help people listening to this I um I take a step back and I look at the the one thing that I know that I'm really good at which is my client relationship right and I do the same if I was incredibly gifted at programming um I take a step back I look at my strength which is my relationships and I think to myself am I doing everything that I possibly can to be making my clients either feel appreciated or um am I doing my best basically okay um have I been slacking and there's been some times where I get this anxiety and I take a step back and I think you know what I've slacked over the past couple of weeks Mm. um and I've caught myself I realized that that's not okay and I make small moves not massive moves because Mm -hmm. then it just starts looking weird but little things to make sure that I'm getting back on track so I will 
then and there delegate an hour in my diary to text clients um, and ask them how their week's been or I'll think about what's been going on in their lives and I'll say oh how is your kid's birthday party at the weekend so I'll do that things or if there's been a client that I was supposed to go for coffee with and I had to reschedule for some reason I will then be like right and I'll make time in my diary that week to see them so I work on the thing that I know that I'm best at and I know that that's what I'm proud of giving them and that helps my anxiety for sure good good yeah because I think that's really good for people to listen to. Um, we had because we had Carl Morris on the podcast last week, who's a high performance psychology coach, and he echoed a lot of what you've just said. There is that observation sometimes, like you said, one thing about you you take a step back. Yeah, you don't make massive changes. You just observe yeah. and you think, "What have I done?" Uh, or you you look at the the actions you've taken recently and think, "Is that the standard I want to keep?" And is there anything that I'd like to change? Yeah. And he was very similar. It was really interesting talk with him about when he works with a client and he's talking about high, high, high level sports people, like people who work in the Premier League for football and um, major winners for golf. And he would just observe them and just say, look, just, just, mm. sit, with, just sit with yourself for a little bit and see what do you think. Yeah. And if there's something there, honestly and truthfully, that you need to change, change it. Yeah. <laughs> if there's nothing, keep going. Yeah, exactly. like, There's nothing I you need to change. If you dig your head in the sand, then that's just going to make it worse. If you go along, like you're saying, thinking that you can do no wrong, yeah, or that actually everything else, if you ignore that feeling of anxiety, yeah, that's, that's the problem. Yes, that's it, isn't it? I mean, that anxiety feeling is is there to serve you. It's almost like being going saying thanks that that's a good yeah. feeling I want to feel that and I want to sit back for a little bit and I want to observe well, what do I what do I think now I've detached mm-hmm. myself from that feeling what do I think yeah. am I doing everything I can or is there a little bit mm-hmm. something I've not not been doing recently and yeah. then taking action on it if you need to mm-hmm. but it it doesn't need to be huge action I think yeah. that, that's really good advice for people class oh yes. brilliant I'm I'm going to wrap it up. I think that's yeah. a really good. Don't ask me another question. Before. I could talk for so long. <laughs> I think the longest podcast we did was like two hours odd. And we'd <laughs> I'd probably keep going and keep going and keep going. I think if Matt was here, he'd, we would be going two hours plus because he'd oh, have more I questions for you as well. <laughs> that, that has really been stupendously useful. And um, I think there's lots for people to take from that, not just trainers in their first year or two. I think trainers maybe three, four, five years in because oh. um, some of the things you you talk about, a lot of experienced trainers could benefit from. So thank you for your time. Thank and, you for uh, having me. As always. It's a, listening to me talk. <laughs> always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so if there's anywhere where people can kind of, find you or or if it's a a client listening to this or a potential client or anybody who would want to get in touch with you is there anywhere they can find you easily you on instagram facebook anything like that i'm on um i'm on instagram so uh it's bcj underscore training um or you can go on to the total fitness um altering app and i'm on there as well um so yeah lots of ways lots of ways to find me really awesome all right okay so if you want to get in touch with ben beth not ben beth no if you want to get brother. in touch with beth <laughs> is that your brother yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get in touch with beth you can find her at those places but uh until next time thanks very much for being here today thank you Hello and welcome along again to the Profit Podcast for another week. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Paul Campy. I'm your host and I'm doing a solo episode this week. Well, solo in terms of hosting. Matt isn't with us this week, but I'm also um, joined by a guest who is Beth John, who is a, a mentoring client of mine who I've been working with for about 12 months plus, who has a hell of a lot to talk about in terms of being 
not just a self-employed personal trainer, but she also came from an employed model of being a personal trainer. And I really enjoyed this episode. I mean, I know Beth personally, but I wasn't potentially prepared for the insights that she gave in this episode about being a new PT as an employed PT, the lessons she's learned, the application of, of what she did to become successful. And this is someone who's been very successful in her first 15 to 16 months. She would have the PT business that most people would die for in their first 16 months. So sit back, listen to lots and lots of really good insights from Beth John. <laughs> 